Hey, welcome to Mike the Baptist. I'd like to say uh, hello to Susan Jones. Thank you. And uh, everybody say hello, Susan. We'll wait. I couldn't hear it, Hi. but I know you're out there. But anyway, welcome back. Thanks. For another uh, rambunctious episode of uh, husband and wife stuff on Mike the Baptist. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Death cage match. Death cage. <laughs> welcome to uh, husband H. D. Jones. I almost said B. <laughs> Easy for you to say, right? H. B. Welcome to both of you. Glad you're back. I'm Mike DeBaptist. This is our uh, silly little podcast and or video. I guess it's a video podcast. Would it be a show? Is it wrong to call something where you talk about the Bible and Christian stuff a show? It's an episode. Episode, yes. <laughs> I've had a few episodes. <laughs> We're about to have another one. So anyway, <laughs> welcome back. An episode. Send us an email, comments at MikeTheBaptist.com. That's an email address, and you can send an email, and you can say what's on your mind. And last week, we had a listener send us in a nice question for any or out. It turned out to be a good one. So we encourage you to send us some more of those, and we'll use them if we can, if we can at all. Uh, www.MikeTheBaptist.com. It's a website. Go on it and do what you do on websites. There. <laughs> Today on the front porch, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about uh, episodes. Hey, there's that word episodes again. Which reminds me, the buzzer has not been used a lot recently, and it, it's my fault. You've trained us. You know, maybe that's what it is. You've dumbed down your maybe guests. That's what it is. I used to hear a lot of people uh, uh, say how they liked the buzzer because it did dumb things down. I was I was proud to hear that because that was the reason for it. I'd just like to say propitiation. <laughs> That's what happens. So we'll try to be cognizant of that fact that it's there. Um, so uh, HD was telling a story about their youngest son. Uh, seems like everybody has a story about y'all's youngest son, but I have <laughs> one too. Uh, but uh, he was telling a story about that earlier, and something happened at the Smithsonian. And I thought, you know, that'd be an interesting front porch topic to – Tell a story or two about things that happen at places like that, museums or venues, you know, things you go to. So, um, H.T., let's just start with you since uh, yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> since your goal of this podcast was to make preachers look more normal. Normal. Yes. yes. And now it's now it's sliding off the scale of let's just make y'all look bad. So, <laughs> okay, not one of my finer moments, um, but. And men will understand this better. Men will understand this better. So, women will want to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> no, men will understand this better. When you go on vacation, you are the alpha dog. You're you're responsible for the safety and well being of your family. You're point man. I mean, you really are. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, my wife, wanted to go to Washington D.C., the crime capital of our nation. Exactly. But it's so cool. So we go. Is it cool or cold? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. All right. It was cool. And we go, and Micah's seven. Did he turn 10? It was his birthday. I don't know. It was his birthday. Was. So Marie didn't go with us. So she was in college. Yeah, she was with us. She was? Yeah. Oh, everybody I just forgot there. about her. Um, no, I think everybody was there. So her mom and dad went. We all went. Maybe I was thinking about, never mind. Um, so high alert. I'm on high alert, you know. We have to ride the metro I'm on high alert. Well, most of this trip, I've got a death grip on Micah's hand because I'm like, you know, you hear all this kids get stolen, mm -hmm. da, da, or, you know, I can see him falling off into the metro and being shocked by the rails of the subway. It had been an intense trip. It had been an intense <laughs> trip, right? right? Right. So we get to the Smithsonian, and Micah's just doing what kids at that age do. Yeah, there's another rock. Yeah, there's another blah, blah, blah. Yeah, can we leave yet? This is a stupid <laughs> museum, right? So, he's, you know, we've endured together. And uh, so he just really starts mouthing off. And I get down on his level, and I'm looking at him eyeball to eyeball, and I'm <laughs> trying to explain to him why he needs to have an attitude adjustment. Mm -hmm. Grandparents are with us. And really what I want to do is I want to pick him up with one hand and just wear that bottom out with the other. But I also was smart enough to realize I'm in the federal <laughs> tax, 
town home of you know a bunch of liberals Mm -hmm. that if they see me whipping my child you know i mean we believe in spare the rod spoil the child but not everybody does right no not beat not beat at all but anyway no, you wouldn't want to hurt them. I don't want to hurt them. You just stun them. You just want to stun them a little just bit. You just want to get their attention. Yes. So okay, I'm moving along. So I'm down on one knee and I'm talking to Micah, and I don't know what he said, but he smarted off to me, and I leaned in, and all of a sudden, this moment of brilliance, I just headbutted him. I mean, just bam, and he, he kind of like he was shocked. He recoiled a little bit, like, did you just headbutt me? I think it scared you. But it got his attention, and you know, we made it home. Look, he's still alive today. Yes. So, and you didn't get arrested, which I'm I'm thinking nowadays you get more arrested for a headbutt than a spanking. What? Wonder what statute of limitations? I'll probably get written up in the paper next week for that. But he's alive and well and thriving as a a very productive young man in society, and he has me to thank for that. He now now knows how to behave in the society. Right, bud. At the right, right. So last week it was. Micah with uh, scissors and cut the tip of your finger off. Right. This week is the Smithsonian. The headbutt. Yep. This is unrelated, and I've told it a long time ago before here, but uh, when Micah was real little, I came to the church one day. I used to go down there all the time during the day, a lot more than I do now, but I remember going into the church one, one day, and I walk into the lobby, and Micah is standing there outside the church secretary's office mm-hmm. with a plastic sword. Pointed down toward the ground. He's just standing there, and he's just looking at me. When I walked in, he's just looking up at me. And I just look at him, say hello or something. But then I look right beside him, and there's a potted plant that had no leaves on it. <laughs> Every single leaf had been beaten off of it, and Michael was standing right beside it with his right. plastic yep, sword. Yep, he yep. had beaten every yep. leaf off of that. Yep. It was so funny. Sounds about right. Okay, Micah, sorry about all that. but Is that it? Yeah, that's good. That's enough. probably enough. Yeah, for that's enough. Headbutt to your son. Yeah. We weren't even like anonymous about which kid we were talking about. Which museum was it? Do you remember? <laughs> the was one, the one with the Hope Diamond and the dresses of the presidents. The, yeah, oh yeah, the American dresses. history. Maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Yes. All right, Susan. I, I don't guess I thought of one. We talked about. <laughs> nope. About being a museum, something from a museum. Well, Maybe or a venue. Uh, let me tell one <clears throat> okay. while you're thinking. While you're thinking. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, I like museums, and we went to at uh, outside the St. Louis Zoo, which is a great facility. The zoo, and you cross this walkway over the highway over into the. They have a science museum and all. Mm-hmm. Great. It's all free too. Go up there. But anyway. Uh, on the zoo grounds or just above the zoo grounds, there's this great art museum with some really famous paintings. and It's a great, great art museum. I think it's three levels maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, art, sculpture. I think there's even like mummies and medieval armor and stuff like that. It's a great museum. We were up there one time, and uh, Michael and I, my son, uh, like to do things <coughs> a little off the path on what? occasion. <laughs> yes. What? We were standing in one of these art galleries and we were watching these people. You know, uh, there are there are crazy people that go to art museums and read those. If you ever go read those little plaques, how full of, I don't know, BS? Mm-hmm. <laughs> those little plaques are about what this artist was trying to get over. And, and I'm looking at them. I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at these plaques going, I think what you did, you painted a picture, and then you stood back and looked and said, you know, that kind of makes me think of, you didn't have all that in your head when you painted that. That's that's baloney. But anyway, so I've been watching these people stand. They go stand in front of these things. They fold their arms. You know, they read a plaque, and then they stand back, and they just stand in front of these paintings and things. And we were in the modern art wing and uh, waited for everybody to leave the room. I took off one of my shoes. In fact, in the green room in here, when you go in the green room, mm-hmm. uh, over on the wall by the door going out, mm-hmm. there's a picture of what we did. I took one of my boat shoes, and there's this huge modern art painting, which was basically, I think, just some stripes of color. That's all it was. <laughs> right. But it was right. huge, like 10 mm-hmm. feet tall and 20 feet long, mm-hmm. covered almost from one whole wall, and there was a bench in front of it. And people would come sit and just stare at those color stripes and so i took one of my shoes when no one was in there and i took it over and just put it in front of the art 
just down there in front of the art. And then Michael and I went back around somewhere in the corner there and watched, and people mm-hmm. would come in and they would study that but like she, it was part of the exhibit. It was just so funny to us. And it was funny until one of the people with the uh, uniforms came in and kind of, they really just mm-hmm. basically pointed like, you know, out. Yeah. You know, so we got out. But anyway, <laughs> that's my story. You got kicked out of a museum. Yeah. We got kicked out of the museum. If yeah. I think about it, when I'm editing this episode, I'll put that picture up. But it's okay. still funny to me that people came in there and just looked at it. And like and thought that she was part of it. Yes. Okay, Susan. I'm not coming up with anything. He's going to have to. He's either going to have to help me or you're going to have to just edit me out. Well, I was just sitting over here. I was on cruise control. I did my. <laughs> I know. I can't yes, but you've always thing. got something in your head, the things I that happen. I don't remember stuff. It really kind of scares me when we come here and you ask me stuff. I'm like, I don't know. Then he'll bring something up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I do remember that. You know, it's um, important, though, Susan. I was just saying it's important for viewers and listeners to see this <laughs> part of it's production. Creative. Yes, of, of that okay. sometimes it just doesn't unfold. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I, and so it's just yeah. part of reality. Uh, me, I mean, we've gone to museums and stuff. I just can't think of anything funny or crazy that's happened. Okay, or then. Menus. Oh, wait. I can <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, is it okay? Well, is it okay if it's not in? Yes. Yes. Just okay. go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Unless so, it's about me. No, it's not about you. <laughs> okay. No. Not about you beating our children. <laughs> we, were, uh, we were at uh, Yellowstone. I guess we'd gone to see Old Faithful. And all that. We had all the kids with us. And, again, we had your parents and my parents with us. We used to do some of the national parks with both sets of our parents, which was fun to get to do that. And we had um, gotten out. There's these little walkways where they had the little hot spots and the little multicolored. I can't think of what you call them. Hot springs, kind of. All these. Multi- they're, like, bluish and red where the sulfur and all that. All mm-hmm. that. And so there's this <clears> boardwalk <throat> that you're supposed to stay on the walk and all this stuff. And so the kids have been being pretty good, but they were a little stir crazy because we were in and out of the car making the different stops. And and I'll tell this one on Reed. So this was Reed. <clears throat> so he got out. We're walking along and he had a water bottle. And we told him like, okay, you can't step off the walkway and you can't throw anything off. And you, and so him and, I guess it was maybe him and Micah got in a, is that who got in a little spat or something? They, they got remember. in something. Yep. I can't remember exactly what happened. But they got in some kind of little thing. And next thing we knew, his water bottle he was carrying was over the rail in the <laughs> I think he swung it at some one of them or something. Yeah, but it ended up landing. And there, was a, and there was a national park guy who came up who was none too oh. happy. Yeah, yeah. they we take all that so serious. Yes. He came up and, like, he had to get it. And, and we were like, you know, you can leave now. Yep. Whatever pictures you've got, you're yes. done in this then area. He was, then he was mad. He was slamming the door on the van yeah. that we had embarrassed him. And I was like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like you're the one that threw the water bottle, doofus, but whatever. Reed being the old, oldest. Reed. Yep. Yeah. Did our, the middle, middle kid. Did Marie ever do anything? Reed's the middle kid. Did you say? I thought I thought Marie. No, Marie's, Marie's the oldest. oldest. Yep. Yeah, Marie's okay. the oldest. Well, did yeah. she ever do anything out of Not sorts? as much. She was a little more sly and covert. Yeah. She wasn't quite as out in the open as the boys were. She I was, was just trying to get a little un- something yeah, out about she's all. She's a little behind. The, yeah. behind the <laughs> she's a good liar. Yeah. Ah. Bad, that's what we, that's her that's her thing. That's her claim. Yeah. Thing. And she still does it to me. Yeah. I'm like, you're an adult. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to lie. She still won't disappoint you. So she'll be like, oh yeah, I did that. No, you didn't. Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, uh, one thing about y'all, the dynamic's always entertaining. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Hey, that same trip, mm-hmm. I was thinking about this, and I was like, I was, I'm not going to tell it, but yeah, I'm going to tell it now. Mm-hmm. So that same trip. <laughs> as long as it's not on me. It's not. Okay. <laughs> same thing he said. <laughs> we, we pull, we pull up it. to uh, Mount Rushmore, and uh, the weather had kind of changed, and the wind was blowing and everything. Well, my mom and dad get out, and of course, mom and dad are just, you know, they're hilarious anyway by themselves. My dad's got on his little, like Mr. Jean hat. I don't know what you call them. Flat little, hat. Little flat, flat hat. We call hats. him like a bebopper hat. Yeah. I don't know really news what you call it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got his little hat on, and of course, then they have their cushions, because if they sit somewhere, they have to have a cushion, you know. And this wind come up and blows his hat off, and it's going down. I mean, like, it's in the parking garage, yeah. wasn't it? And my mama's trying to catch it, and they're <laughs> screaming at each other, and we're <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing. Everybody's running, trying to catch his hat. Trying to catch his hat, and there may have been a few words that were said. And, you know. We're trying not to cuss. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. So. Somebody could have slipped something during that episode. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun. We got his hat though. Yeah, you're uh, you like your mom and dad show up in a lot of All stories. They do, yeah. They're a trip. They are a trip. They're a trip. All right, good front porch visit, and uh, see Susan. It came right out. It pulled up out of you. I threw Reed under the bus. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's what this is really all about. Am I throwing our kids under the bus? We don't know we why they. We children. don't know why they need therapy. <laughs> we don't know why they don't want to come around. There is we a kind of our a, children. A plane for it. We put pork in quite often. Yep. A lot of it about somebody else. Yes, yeah, family. Well, yeah. Don't be talking about me. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> okay. Before we talk about me, let's take a break. Come back. Talk about stuff we found in the Bible. <clears throat> Do you listen to or watch Mike the Baptist? Do you wear clothes? If so, we've got some great news. T-shirts and hoodies are now available at MikeTheBaptist.com. Just visit MikeTheBaptist.com, click on the merchandise link, and you'll find high-quality tees, hoodies, and even onesies for the babies in a variety of colors, all with the Mike the Baptist logo and familiar sayings from the program. Mike the Baptist is a true labor of love. No one has to pay to listen or watch the program, but Mike and the crew have to eat. So a portion of each sale of a t-shirt or hoodie goes to Mike's local Kroger, Walmart, or Electric Utility. It's kind of simple like that. In order to keep the program free, we have to generate a bit of income to pay the bills. When you make a purchase, you're not only doing the world a favor by wearing clothes, you're helping keep the messages of Mike the Baptist on the air. Thanks for helping out, and thanks so much for being involved in spreading the good news. What a great planet. Hey, we're back. You know what? I say it every time we do one of these, but I'm serious. The Bible was fascinating, and I just brought that up last week on last week's episode. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's so fascinating. You two took off and talked about it for a good long while there. I thought that was kind of interesting because... Sometimes I'll say that here and it'll catch somebody off guard a little bit. But y'all just picked right up on it. I expect the same from you today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go back to last week's and, <laughs> yeah. and listen. Pull some listen, stuff out. Pull some stuff out. Yeah. I don't know. Just like an initial gut reaction, something about the Bible that's fascinating. You know, to me, what's fascinating about the Bible is just how it proves itself over and over again. Mm-hmm. And it's such a wonderful predictor of human the condition that we're all in spot on i mean it really is i mean um if i were to write a story about myself i would definitely make me look good most of the authors in the bible don't look good in the story and that's because the story is not about the men and women in the book it's about the god that makes them to be the men and women he wants them to be and so there's a there's a lot of stuff in there that's not pg I mean, uh, mm-hmm. there's things like incest and murder and deceit and lying and all that stuff that's in there. Um, and so, you know, I think that's one of the things that's refreshing about it is God God is honest with us about who we are and who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, every time. Speaking of the Bible. Talk about some stuff we found in there this this week. Well, we're kind of taking a different slant on our Connect study this week, and and really we've been reading about one individual in particular. We're reading about this guy named Aaron, so I thought it'd be kind of interesting, almost like an in or Audi. This is <coughs> this is going to be uh, just kind of catch all of us a little off guard. Um, I want you just to throw out everything we know about Aaron in the Old Testament. Anything that just jumps in your mind, throw throw that out there. Okay. He was Moses' brother. Moses' brother. That's good. That. <laughs> he was older, right? Was he, he was, the oldest? He was the older brother. Yeah. That, Is he that him and two. Then Miriam and then Moses, I guess? Two yeah. A's. Noah? Yep. Was it two A's in his name? Yes, two okay. A's. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Way to pick up on that. <laughs> well, I'm... I'm trying to cover up the fact that I don't know a lot of details about him. I know it's kind of interesting when you start thinking about these characters, you know. Um, but you know, you automatically know about him. Yep. You know that yeah. you heard about him. But he ends up being Moses's mouthpiece. He's who goes yep. with Moses yep. to talk to Pharaoh and do all that because Moses. Moses told said God he and that he didn't, didn't speak well. Didn't speak well, and God says, "Well, take your brother with you." Um, we know he's the first high priest. Because oh, yeah. they're from the tribe of Levi, mm-hmm. we know that. Um, Didn't he kind of? Well, he took over for Moses after Moses died, right? Joshua, Joshua, Joshua did. That's right. That's right. Joshua did. Um, we know his two sons uh, didn't do well. Oh, they didn't do well in the priesthood. So had some 
they had both some lied? Is that what family it? drama? Had some family drama there. Uh, <laughs> he also complained or argued about Moses. Um, so it's kind of interesting, you know. That'd be, um, I would tell our listeners, um, buck up on your reading on Aaron because that's what you're going to have in your Connect class this week. But also go and do a little bit of extra study. Uh, God puts these characters in the Bible for a reason. Um, it's, it's for us to learn. Um, probably the biggest thing we know about Aaron is this episode with the golden calf. So let's talk about that okay. situation a little bit. All right. All right. This is where y'all talk. <laughs> oh, well, we we're going to let you start talking about the golden calf. I did. I said the golden yeah. calf. <laughs> well, Moses well, was up on the mountain okay. talking to God. Right, getting the Ten Commandments. Okay, yep. Yeah. So they're out of they're out they're of out bondage. Of Egypt. Yep. Yep. Gone through the Red Sea. Yep. Head to Mount Sinai to receive God's law for them. Right. Moses has gone up on the mountain for like forty days. That seems right. Yeah, I think that's right. Forty days. So did they come up with this golden calf while he was gone? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I knew more than I thought I did. See, there, there you go. go. So. They couldn't wait for him to get back. They had to have something to bow down to, I guess, or something, didn't they? They turned in all their jewelry. Aaron kind of orchestrated it. He had yeah. to turn in all their jewelry and things. And do you remember? They, do you remember what he said? It just cracks me yes. up. It's like I, I just <clears throat> the people were forcing me, and he goes, "We put all the gold in here, and it kind of Oof. fell out. It, it fell as out a as a calf, mm-hmm. you know." Um, but that was when he was making an excuse to Moses, right, yeah. of what happened. Yeah. Interestingly enough, uh, that would have been one of the gods that they worshipped in Egypt. And so what I, what you see in that is that it doesn't take very long for us to fall back to um, some things in our life. And that's just a kind of a challenge to us to be careful about those things. But Aaron, I mean, here's the religious one of the religious leaders of the group then um, and he falls right in and allows the people to draw him into doing that and how in the world could you worship any other god but the god that you've seen who's destroyed egypt with the ten plagues and the other irony is god's up on the mountain and what's one of his what's one of his commandments no other gods before me mm-hmm. no graven image right or no graven image no graven image them. Mm-hmm. And you kind of wonder, as God is sharing that, is this going on? Almost kind of at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just kind of the <laughs> irony that's in that. But um, we see we see a lot of um, ourselves in these characters in the Bible. Um, and so I guess my bigger question in all this is, why does God spend his time Michael, why does God God use people like us? Why why in the world? I mean, it seems like there would be a straighter course. You know, Uh, I'm going to send Jesus, and we're going to send a thousand angels with him, and we're going to straighten this mess out and be done. Mm -hmm. Why does God fool with us? I guess that's what troubles a lot of people about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. About uh, you know, everybody I think's looking for their uh, a reason. At some point in your life, you look for a reason why you're there, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and having, uh, having led some classes of adults at my church for a number of years, I saw over and over where people struggled with that question about, you know, what's, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Et cetera, et cetera. I've come to the conclusion to answer your question about why he would uh, do what he does through people like you and I and you and Moses and different people when obviously they all screwed up, yeah. y'all included, me included. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I've come to the conclusion that uh, he doesn't have to do that things that way. And we probably, I don't think we'll probably ever totally understand why he does it that way other than he obviously wants to have something to do with us individually. Mm-hmm. He obviously... It's like the thing about getting saved. Why are we not just zapped and gone to heaven right mm-hmm. then and there? Uh, I think it's because he wants, I guess the churchy word, I'm going to have to buzz myself, is he wants to have a relationship <laughs> with people, which is a, another hard concept because you can't physically touch him. And the way you think about relationships, you think right. about somebody like y'all. I know you all. I have this friendship with you and this relationship with you. You can't see God that way, so you have to, 
taking on faith somehow that you know him, he knows you, and you can sense it. You can kind of sense it. Uh, but I don't think I don't think we totally will ever understand till we get there why he chose to do it that way. But what I do know, uh, in my limited knowledge of what's going on here, is that it was his decision to do it the way he's doing it. Right. It's not for me to really figure out mm-hmm. why he's doing it. I think my role and my job is to figure out how I can go along with it. Uh, knowing I'm going to screw it up too. I mean, I screw things up regularly. Uh, but I kind of sense, talking about sensing him, I sense that he knows that about me. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, he's there the next morning ready to go again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the why, but I don't think I'll ever know. Do you? Not really. For some reason, this comparison is running through my brain and it's not a complete comparison you can't make them equal but I think about you know when we had children and even now with our grandchildren we enjoy teaching them to do things like teaching the kids how to make their bed we're working with them about how to fold towels Um, when the boys were growing up he would teach them how to go and do you know woodworking or things around the farm and, and and load the dishwasher simple things that the goal is Number one, you just want to spend time with them, but you're trying to grow them into a an adult, um, a functioning adult. So I feel like there's some comparison in that with that God's mm-hmm. wanting to spend time with us. He enjoys, I'm sure there's a lot of parts about our relationship that are very frustrating, especially when I fail him. It's just like my grandkids, when they're helping me load the dishwasher and they break a glass, mm-hmm. it's <laughs> frustrating when I could have just done it myself and been done a quarter of the time and not broken a dish. But I didn't accomplish anything that will further the next generation by doing that. I didn't improve them. I didn't make them a better person. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I feel like there's some comparison in that, that Mm -hmm. that he enjoys spending time with us. And he's, you know, trying to make us understand him and know him better. And again, as as part of that, bring other people with us Mm -hmm. where he can have a relationship with even, even more people. So do you do that with your grandkids because you feel obligated and responsible to do that or do you do that because you're concerned about them as people yeah i want them to be yeah it's not my job especially as a grandparent that's not really my job i could just sit around and do nothing with them them yeah yeah we've been to their we've been to our kids house they don't do dishes (laughs) 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 let let me show you how to no i'm just kidding but a lot of it's just about spending time together and just you know Mm -hmm. teaching them things it's fun to teach them things yep and watch them grow up and watch them get better at it. They tell, become better and better. Tell your, uh, what, what did you used to plant in the garden with the grandkids? Uh, on occasion, well, it wasn't on occasion, one year, I took some uh, linguine pasta and I broke it into thirds. And I went out in my garden and I stuck a row of or two of one-third length linguine pasta in the ground. Okay. And then the grandkids come over, and I took them out to the garden, showed them that I had planted some spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> so in a week or whatever, they came back, and I had went out there and put some half sticks. <clears throat> That's hilarious. In there, and then about the <laughs> third time, way too much fun. Yeah, right? yeah. About the third time, I planted whole sticks and and yeah. took them out, and we all picked it. And I've got these great photographs. <laughs> I think my grandson at the time had on like a Captain America suit or something <laughs> That's that <awesome>. day. <laughs> Awesome. And granddaughter had on a little dress or something. But anyway, I've got these great pictures of them out there. They're helping me pick the spaghetti. And uh, in a couple of them, they look very serious about it. You know, they were putting that spaghetti in the whatever we had, a sack or whatever. That's awesome. But, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> have thought about doing that, babe. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I never told them any different. Yeah. They may still fun. <laughs> yeah, right. Just having fun. <laughs> Just having fun with them. Uh, but I think all of that is part of the answer. You know, again, Aaron made some really tragic choices, but he also made some really good choices. Right. He was the mouthpiece that God used in Pharaoh's court. Um, he was uh, also the one that Joshua was fighting, and when Moses has his hands lifted up, the Israelites are winning the battle. And when Moses got tired and his started, arms started going down, they started losing. And so Aaron was one of those guys that lifted up one of the arms, so he was that support person there that helped um, help Moses be seen in the light that he needed to be seen in so that the Israelites could win. Um, 
but as we were talking about this, and I, Susan, I agree with you exactly when you said, you know, our kids and grandkids, you know, I can do stuff so much quicker. And to be honest, when I'm in a hurry, it aggravates me a little bit to go, okay, here they come, and I've got to slow down, and I've got to let them be a part of it, mm-hmm. even to the point where, you know, if it's like, hey, I want you to tighten up this bolt or whatever, you might you might give it a little extra turn after they're done, but you're mm-hmm. telling them what a great job they've done. <clears throat> and then a few weeks ago, my friend uh, Rob Blackaby, Dr. Rob Blackaby, was at church, and he shared this story, and I was like, man, that's it. That's a great illustration because from God's perspective, <clears throat> who brought the people out of Egypt? Well, God did. Mm-hmm. Did he need Moses? Did he need Aaron? No. God did the work. If you look at people and you say, who brought people? Oh, Moses. Moses brought. And Moses probably even thought, you know, hey, I'm the guy, you know. And uh, he used this illustration about doing a puzzle, you know, just a small puzzle, 25-piece puzzle. You, your kids are sitting in your lap, two or three years old. I do it. I'm going to do it myself. And you're like, okay. And you're watching them and you realize, okay, you, you're not doing this right. And so you tell them, twist it. Just turn it a little bit. And then you help them get that puzzle together. And at the end of the puzzle, you know, the kid looks up and says, I do it all by myself. And you just smile. Yeah, you did. You know, but the parent knows, really, I did it. You, all you did was uh, you helped me. But if it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't have been able to figure it out. And I kind of think that's the reason God does these things is that he wants us uh, to be a part of kingdom work. He wants us to be a matter of fact. He wants us to be a part of his glory. You know, one day we're going to lay down our crowns. He's going to reward us. He's going to give us crowns and rewards for what we did. But we're going to have that realization. You know what? I wouldn't have been able to do that had you not given me the ability to do that and the want to to do that. And so we're going to lay those crowns down Mm -hmm. at his feet. So it's this it's this thing and very much like a child. I think very much like a child where parents and grandparents uh, we want to see our kids be a part of our life. We want to see them um, grow and mature. And so God God does that in our world, too. Mm-hmm. It's nice that he would think about you that much to want to do that. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, I just thought of something uh, you can do with your grandkids. <laughs> Besides playing spaghetti? <laughs> yes. You could take them out there one day. And dig you a little row and let them help you plant some miniature marshmallows. Mm. And about a week later, come back out with some full-size ones, put some sticks in the ground that's got little branches on them, and put those marsh- big marshmallows out there and have them pick them. <laughs> Take pictures. Yeah. And I want to see like them. Take pictures. <laughs> well, it is a lot of work. but You, you know, know your, pretty funny. Your, your grandkids, that'll probably be one of those stories that they'll tell. Mm-hmm. At some point, they'll realize that's not where spaghetti comes from. <laughs> yeah. And that'll be a story they tell. I know my dad, he tells this story, and it, it meant a lot in his life. He said, I don't even know how old he was. He was probably seven years old. And on his way out the door to go to school, his dad looked at him and said, when you get home today, I want you on the tractor, cultivate that field. I'll, I'll be home, and you better have it done. <laughs> my grandmother... <laughs> who babied my dad, was panicked. So what did she do? She got up early that morning, did all her work that had to be done, and when my dad got home from school, she sat in the seat of the tractor and put Ted in her lap. Hmm. (laughs) And he said, he said, I knew Mama loved me Hmm. because she didn't want me to get in trouble. Hmm. But she also didn't think I was big enough to do the work and that's the way god is god god knows we're not big enough to do this work by ourselves and he wants us to be part of it with him which is kind of cool kind of yeah kind of cool <laughs> just riding a tractor out there by yourself is not near as fun no especially if you don't know what you're doing especially, <laughs> yeah. when, you, especially when you don't know what you're doing that's right i'm impressed grandma knew what to do <laughs> right that's pretty impressive actually it is yeah. that she would saddle up there on the tractor. yeah yeah. Have at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh the whole God thing is such a big thing to think about. I mean, if you try to think about it all at one time. I but 
it's a little simpler than that, isn't it? Yep. I mean, for a starting place anyway, it's, it's a little simpler than that. Uh, you know, I've known you for a good long while. You're a preacher. I've known several preachers. I haven't ran into one yet that knows it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you do, run. Mm-hmm. That's their line. Well, there are a few of them on TV. <laughs> right. Right. That believe uh, they might know it all. But uh, I don't I don't believe, you know, you're talking about what I knew about Aaron a while ago. I don't know a lot about Aaron. I, I know about the main character. Right. Uh, but then I learned about the main character uh, that he didn't really have it all together either. Didn't he break a set of commandments once mm-hmm. on his way down? Kind of had to go back. And, yep. <laughs> which is kind of yeah. kind of hilarious. He got mad way. about that golden calf mm-hmm. and threw threw yeah. the commandments at him. Yeah, it's like uh, I wonder if he said like "oops." <laughs> <laughs> he might have said "oops," but uh, the moral of the story is, I think, that you don't have to be perfect to be involved in this. Right. Is that correct? Yes. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And the bigger picture is that God, you know, because we asked that <clears> why <throat> why would God want to use us? Again, a whole lot easier for him to do it on his own. Hmm. But he wants us to be a part of it, so much so that Jesus put on flesh. Hmm. Jesus put on flesh. This is this is one of those things that just should blow us out of the water. In heaven one day, human beings are the only ones that can look at Jesus and say, he died for me. Hmm. He didn't die for angels. He didn't die so that puppy dogs and kitty cats, they don't they don't need a savior. They're not sinners. We needed a savior. <laughs> and so we will see him in flesh. We'll be in our perfected flesh. And it's just gonna be it's an amazing thing. You know, um he became one of us so that we could be like him. Um and all you got to do supposedly is just believe that, right? Yeah. Yep. Susan, what would you say to the unsaved person? Oh, it's the best thing you could ever do. You need to give your life to Christ. As, Why? <laughs> Why? Well, first of all, because you want to go to heaven <clears throat> for eternity. You do not want to be in hell. It's a real place, um, and it's not a party with a bunch of drinking and rock and roll music. Mm-hmm. It's a place of fire <laughs> and in miserable life and without the presence of God forever. And I don't think we have any concept of mm-hmm. what it would be to not have God's presence. Even if we don't believe in him, his presence is around you. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't believe it is, it's right. there. We've never experienced on this earth yep. not having his presence in place. That's a pretty sobering thing to think about, uh, whether you believe it or not, Yeah, that it might be true. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You know, That's, I think one of the... Um, one of the best illustrations I've seen is, you know, they draw, they've drawn a big circle and said, okay, let's let's say this is all knowledge. This this circle, let's say this big, is all knowledge. Everything that man has ever learned, will ever know, is all encompassed in this circle. Do you think you understand all that? Do you know every about everything in that circle? Well, much of most of us are not. We're smart enough to understand that. No, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know everything about everything. There's definitely parts of knowledge in that circle that I'm not aware of. Maybe God's in this little part down here and you just haven't gotten there yet just because you're not you haven't found his circle Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not there so seek after his circle and it is michael i will say you know it is as simple as believing in god but i think some of us do i caution you that there are people that believe there is a god but they've not given their life to god and that's a big difference yep that's a big difference. You can believe God is out there, but you're not living for him. You're not pursuing him. You're not wanting to put all of the apples in your basket under his control. Mm-hmm. You're and, and it's a struggle to do that. I've got apples in my basket that I'm not letting him control. That's a constant struggle. Rotten yeah. apples. Yeah, Rotten. but I'm trying. <laughs> my goal is to let him have all the apples because he yeah. keeps them in better order than I do. But that's a lot of it. It's just surrender what I want to what he wants. I think it's a surrender word. I'm not going to buzz that because it's a serious thing. Yeah. But the surrender part is what <clears throat> seems to be the hard part for anybody. I was going to ask you hard. earlier, you know, I know how men, hairy-legged men are. You know, we're prideful and, you know, we got to be tough and all that. It's hard for us to. Is it the same for women? 
are women that way? Like if like if uh, somebody's not saved, a, a woman. Uh huh. Do you think it's different for them to be able to get to that point than it is for men? I think there are different barriers. I think you know, for men, maybe it's a it's a it's a power thing. I've got this all on my own. I think for women, it's just uh, we. We like to, well, it's it's kind of a control thing, too, the more I think about it, because I like to have control of things, and I like to orchestrate things, and, and I want things a certain way, and I have an idea in my, in my mind of how my life should be, how mm-hmm. my children's lives should be, how everything should be, and so a lot of times I try and orchestrate all those things, um, but you have to give up that control mm-hmm. of your life being the way you thought it would be, the lives of your children being the way, the life of your husband your marriage you have to give up all that control and let it be what god wants it to be and and trust him to make it better than you would have done here's my final word on the subject you don't have to be at the end of your rope to buy into this no you hear that story a lot about people uh, yes i was at that place yeah at the end of end of the rope yeah but i realize nowadays you don't have to be Mm -hmm. uh at the end of your rope you can take part in it way before that absolutely way before that yeah give her a shot absolutely we'll be back play in your audio thank you for listening to and watching mike the baptist we hope you get something out of these programs and that they bring you a bit of joy and hope this year we want to ask you to help us grow our listening audience by simply sharing these podcasts and video episodes with your friends on social media and in the real world. Our goal is simple. Talk about our faith and how it affects our lives using common language, just the way people really talk. The message really is good news for people who are already churched up and for those who aren't yet because the good news isn't something we're given to keep to ourselves. It's meant to be shared. So we're asking you to share this year by telling others about the foolishness and the fun on Mike the Baptist. We're just Christians trying not to cuss. Hey, everybody, it's time to play America's almost favoritest new game show, Any or Audi, where we challenge our guests to figure out if a phrase we give them is actually in the Bible or out of the Bible. Sharpen your wits, guest. You're about to be in the hot seat of Bible stuff because you're the next contestant on Any or Audi. Here's Mike. Hey, on this uh, round of Any or Audi, the Joneses are in control. I am uh, vulnerable twice, but I'm used to that, so <laughs> I can take it. So we're going to ask you questions, and then you're going to determine whether it's in there or not? Whether it's an any or an Audi? Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yes, exactly. That's, that makes sense. It does. No need to explain all that. No. Uh, so anyway, so HD is in the power seat, and then Susan is in the power seat, or vice versa. Y'all okay. fight amongst yourself about who's going nah, first. No fight. I'll go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> mine's, like that? mine's pretty easy. <laughs> okay. So, in Disney's The Lion King, yes, there is a there is a scene where this herd of buffalo wildebeest. wildebeest. That's what I was thinking. It is wildebeest. That's right. There's this wildebeest, and uh, the little the little lion Simba is in trouble. Mm-hmm. And his dad comes down there and he helps him, but then he can't get out. And he's trying to get out, and his claws are up on the side of the, the mountain. And his brother comes over there and he reaches down to grab a hold of him. Instead of pulling him out, he says, Long live the king. And he lets him fall down to his demise. Mm-hmm. Is that phrase, long live the king, in the Bible? Oh. <laughs> you set that up. You're right. <laughs> You crack me up, Joe. <laughs> Such a pleasant, it, it gets, Such a pleasant story, too. It gets you all drawn into the Lion King. Yep. <laughs> well, I was wondering, you know, I was thinking, now wait, in your Audi's about stuff in the Bible, isn't it? Did we switch? <laughs> did they quote scripture in a Disney movie? Well, did they? <laughs> That's the question. Long, long, long live, live the king. king. What say ye? <laughs> Susan Jones? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that it is. Okay. Because I'm thinking Esther uh-huh. and all the things about um, 
where they paid all this homage to the king and you couldn't come in and talk to the king and uh, what was his name? Uh, hey, Haman. They would bow down when he would come through town. Like, I'm just thinking that sounds like something they would have said along with the king. Or is that Shakespearean? I don't know. Mm. I'm thinking it's a little Shakespearean. It, yeah. That uh, phraseology. Is it that phraseology? Long live yeah, the, the king. king. Oh, that could be Shakespeare. It sounds more Shakespeare to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know really why I'd say that. Because <laughs> like you've I, never read Shakespeare. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I've heard, You're more of a Huck Finn kind of guy. <laughs> I'm absolutely a Huck Finn. Did y'all, did y'all ever read the Beverly Cleary books? Yes. Some of them. Weren't they good? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Yeah, they were about these little kids, red-headed mm-hmm. kids or mm-hmm. something, and they're all, I'm outside getting in the dirt and the I dust. I think she wrote Amelia Bedelia, didn't she? Oh, Red I don't know. <laughs> I think she wrote Amelia. She anyway, wrote, I think she has several. They're great books. Yeah. Fun yeah. occasional. Yes. There you go. Like, I think they would have said a phrase that meant that. Mm-hmm. Like, to Pharaoh and some right. of those. Right, Well, I mean, they had kings, too. Okay. Long of the king. I just don't know if they said that exact phrase. That's what's making me question it. Caesar wasn't a king. He was an emperor, right? <laughs> what's but the difference? Kings. There were kings in different regions, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you had the Book of Kings. Oh, that's a good clue right there that they had kings. <laughs> The first and <laughs> second, yeah. first and second kings. There's two, two books. books. All about the kings. So I'm guessing but they did. did they have. say, "Long live the king." I don't think so. I, that's just my gut reaction. I, long live the king. I hate I, to steer you too, because I steered you off a stool last week. So oh, it's, it happens to, all the time. I hate to mess you up. Oh, uh, because I'm really kind of on the fence. He will put himself in a position. Yeah, I'll figure, in a position. I'll figure out how to work. He'll be right. He'll be right no matter what happens. <laughs> Uh, so I can see where you know there are all these talks about comparing Jesus to other kings and they were making fun of him you know here you're here, the king of the Jews etc cetera, etc cetera. but I don't recall ever hearing in any that other phrase. scripture about where somebody would have said long live the king I could quite likely be wrong here well like I said except for something about I'm thinking about Esther and about all the banquets they had and they did things to you know praise the king Hmm. and in the movie the lion king they would have had to have gotten that from somewhere (laughs) i don't know would they that doesn't seem like a super original phrase you see them i see you see it in movies all the time yeah you've heard it forever maybe shakespeare i think it's shakespeare i really do okay okay I don't. I don't want to steer you wrong either. I'll go with you. Okay. Are you going? Yeah, I'll go with you. It's Audi. It's an Audi. From Shakespeare. Well, keeping with my normal self, I don't even know how to quote. I don't even know how to uh, grade y'all on this. So the phrase <laughs> "Long live the King" is in Psalm seventy-two, fifteen of the New Living Translation. Well, but when you look at some of the other translations, it does not say it that way. So actually, y'all had an opportunity to be right either way. So, well, I don't know. Long live the wrong. king. Okay, so in 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 the past, I have done what you just did. Uh, I think in a week or two or three ago, he drives like a maniac. That phrase was in a couple of translations, but not in the others. Right. So I did pull that. From a translation. So it is actually in there, I guess. I don't think we have a rule for this, but... uh, So I'm terribly confused now. I know, right? Uh, I think y'all at least got half credit. What Do you know what the other translations might have said, how they would have phrased that? Well, not right off the top of my head, but I can look that up. It'd be interesting to know if you got just a second. Well, Uh, while Susan's doing her thing. Yeah, because... Yeah, I know. That sounds Shakespearean. Oh, well, like I said, I would see them saying that to the king, but not necessarily in those words. Right. Which I think is what happened in the other translation. You said that's in the New Living. Yeah. Yep. The New Living translation is a little looser, right? It is. It's like a <laughs> step toward. The no, it's a step <laughs> toward the message. It's a little, <laughs> little more hip language. A little talky. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I really should bring my glasses when they come. Well, yeah. So ESV, long may he live, may gold of Sheba be given to him. Uh, HCSB, may he live long, New King James, and he shall live. Uh, NIV, long may he live, 
It actually is in there. And And he shall live. We'll take the loss because I can see where that comes from now. I think, yeah, I think we should take the loss and uh, Mm. just blame it on translation. (laughs) Okay. I give you half credit on that. All right. All right. You ready for mine? Sure. Sure. Let's go. So there's a story in the Bible about Samson. Okay. Okay. So what, uh, do we know what made Samson so strong? Well, I mean, he had long hair, but is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, his hair made him strong is, is kind of what, kind of what the story is about, okay. right? So he had um, another person in the story named Delilah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in the story of Samson and Delilah, <clears throat> did his girlfriend Delilah cut off his hair to take his strength? I hear the music starting in my mind, but (laughs) the rest of my mind didn't kick in yet. I have a gut reaction to what she just said. Would you like to hear it? (laughs) I'm thinking she had somebody else cut his hair, but she didn't actually do it herself. I'm still stuck on what gave him his strength. So it was the Spirit of the Lord. That's the the right answer to that. Yes, but, Uh, but the story says his hair. Right? That was a symbol because he was yeah. a Nazarite. Yes. Yeah. And that's what he was trying to protect and all. So. But something just makes me think the way it yeah, would ask us. Yeah, thinking about the other things, I think she tied him up and he was able to break the straps. But there is something that makes me think he took a nap. And she had somebody come in and cut his hair. It happened while he was sleeping. I think I remember that, too. Yeah. So she, like, hired a stylist (laughs) (laughs) to do a home visit. Or maybe they had one there at whatever palace that was. Probably had a resident (laughs) stylist. (laughs) Kind of a friendly guy. But anyway. um, (laughs) Wish we could phone a friend on this, you know. We don't have that many. I call, you know, well, we got Joel the barber. He should Joel know. the barber would know. Joel the barber should have his know number. <laughs> We're phoning a friend. I, I can't what? use my phone, but let's do it one time. <laughs> let's do a phone a friend because you can he put might, him on speaker and, and my microphone be, uh, will pick it up. I think you're going to have to get permission for him to be on. No, he don't care. <laughs> yeah, he might. Uh, Our friend Joel is a barber for the first time ever. <laughs> Susan, we're going to phone a friend. Okay. Someone in the hair business. And I hope he's in the middle of one right now so we can interrupt him. Yeah. Your call has been forwarded. Oh, <laughs> come on. He's in the middle of one. Six, one. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give his number out on there. <laughs> okay, well. Good call, Wait, try him back right now because... I mean, two well, he times. Have if you have him in the contact. He knows who it is calling. Well, it's fine, but if, if you ring two times in a row, that usually means we need to talk to you pretty quick. Well, don't stress him out. Yeah. Right. Well, when he calls back, you can tell him what we were wondering. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think I'm not positive, but something in my head just makes me think she didn't actually do it herself. Yeah, I'm 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 with you. I think she called somebody in, but then there's a commotion. Then she calls them in. Hey, they're here to get you or something. But anyway. The whole thing was a commotion. It was a commotion. Oh. But did she not... uh, Was there something about her not being able to do that herself or not needing to do that herself? Is there something in the story? She had carpal tunnel. (laughs) (laughs) She didn't have her cosmetology license. She did not have her license. All right, so we're going with somebody else. Somebody what was the else? question so we can answer it? Did Delilah herself or somebody else do it? Is it in the Bible that Delilah cut off? His, his hair. Yeah, his hair. Th- we think it's an Audi. No. We think it's an Audi. Okay. Judges 16, verse 19. Delilah got Samson to go to sleep with his head lying in her lap. Yep. Then she called in a man to shave off the seven braids of Samson's head. Yes! All right. In this way, she made Samson weak and his strength left him. I almost said he was, he was laying down in her lap, too. Yeah, would he that, did. He said that she took. A, he was asleep. Yeah, would that when be it a happened. bonus round? I mean, you know, she was taking a nap. So obviously, so good job. Y'all are right. obviously, she didn't have scissors <laughs> there with her when he went to sleep. And when it she, said shaved, I was kind of giving you a double. I said cut off his hair, but technically well, same she thing, same thing. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> you know, I totally pulled that out of the air because I don't remember exactly, but something just made me think that. There you go. I don't think good I remember that exactly, but nope, just. 
We take talked, the win. You were right. Take, it's a yeah. win. Take the win and go. All right. Good rounds. And that was a good one. Okay. Good. Very You're good. <laughs> so any kids listening now, when that story comes up, they can say, oh, no, it no. wasn't her. No. And they'll seem she very smarter. Man. Yep. Okay. Good round. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back. Take it. Bye. Oh, wow. What a great contestant and a fine sport today on Any or Audi, America's almost favorite new game show. Study up future guest people. You're next in the hot seat for Any or Audi. So now I've got the Samson Delilah story rolling all through my head. And <laughs> the guy Gold, with the hair. Golden and, calf. Is, golden I mean, this, calf. Is, this has been a it's quite... An episode. It has been. And the stories at the first about museums and yeah. it's just a lot to think about. Yeah. Preacher headbutt his kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway. All right. So, big fun. Uh, Susan, thanks for coming again. Yeah. Thanks for so, having me. Uh, I it's, enjoyed it. It's good. I like the dynamic, as I've said before, and I'm sure we will do it again. Someday we're going to do a live uh, Preacher's Wives at the church. Yeah, we keep We've been that. talking about that, but it's a busy place. Yes, it is. Our little church there is kind of busy, so. But it'll happen. Uh, it will happen. HT, it's nice of you hey, to show up, too. Glad to be here. And uh, talk about some good stuff and some nonsense. You know, if you can't laugh a little, what's the point? I think yeah. God has a bit of a sense of humor. He shows up on occasion. Yeah, we laugh a lot. Yeah, so I'm going to do that, too. Y'all do that, too. Y'all do it well. Shipper rope. Shipper Shifero, before the episode, <laughs> HD just said, sitting at the table, Shifero, that's a funny word, <laughs> and Susan right lost it. Play. Yeah, she was snorting and yeah, everything. Yeah, the two of them just totally lost it. Uh, it was funny. That happens. You know, on occasion, uh, ran, at random times, I will think of a word and just think, well, how odd is that? Yes. How, I mean, like, who got to invent the word fuzz? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. right. Somebody shrinkle. got to invent the shrinkle. Funucational. And it's just odd, but anyway. Okay, <laughs> yeah. see you next time. Uh, remember, folks, we're all just Christians. Try not, not to cuss. cuss. They said in unison. So, <laughs> <laughs> see you next time. Mike the Baptist. Mike the Baptist.